Welcome back to more updates on the Rust Cosmic Desktop from Pop OS and the folks at System76. There's some major updates made, including Pop OS 22.04, long term support, edition updates, and of course, more with the Cosmic Desktop environment. We're going to be talking about all these, but first, I want to show you what I teased the last time since some people were asking to check it out. Here is the latest build of the Cosmic Session for the new Rust Cosmic Desktop. This is what we can test with right now. On the top left hand corner, we have our workspaces designated by this circle. If you have more than one workspace, you'll have more than one number here. In the middle, we have our current date and time, although that's not quite working yet. We can, however, check out some of these extra tools like settings directly from the terminal here that I have launched. Of course, there's a lot still in development, but this gives us an overall feel and idea of what the desktop environment will look like. We have a search bar available in the cosmic settings. If we go through the various different subcategories, we can see how things look here and how we can control the various different settings. I gotta say I am pretty partial to how they've made this. It looks really nice and includes a way to show or hide the sub menu on the left hand side, which is great. Again, this is still in progression, but it is coming along just great. You'll notice this huge border of blue around these apps. I believe that's because tiling is on by default or they just haven't removed the borders quite yet or given us the option to edit those borders. But anyways, what I'm really excited about is something that they're calling widgets, which they plan on supplying to us as an API so we can actually create our own configurations for various different widgets. And when I say widgets, I mean actual desktop environment objects like windows and docs and what have you. I think the theming support is going to be great. At least that's what's been teased. On the right hand side, we have the audio, which allows you to set the output volume or any input that you have like microphone. You have selection on what you want to run your audio on and then of course to access sound settings. Right of that, we have a connection, which is currently a wired connection. You can set airplane mode on and off, turn Wi-Fi on and off and look at the current visible networks. Integrated, this is one of my favorite things here, is they let you select graphics modes on the fly. If you want to use a hybrid graphics mode, like if you have a dedicated graphics card as well as a integrated graphics card, such as an APU, you can use hybrid graphics mode to actually utilize both sets of graphics. NVIDIA, if you have a proprietary NVIDIA graphics card, integrated graphics, meaning it's really just part of your main processing unit or compute graphics, which which enables a different mode altogether. It's really awesome that you can switch between these different graphics mode. I really like how they've added this directly to the desktop up top in the taskbar. Moving on, we have battery components. The icon is currently missing here, but the battery shows you all sorts of battery settings as well as being able to set different modes for your laptop if you're using one with such settings as balanced battery which reduces the power usage and performance or high performance, giving you the boost of performance that you need in order to run things. This is one of my favorite options here is you can increase the lifespan of your battery by setting the maximum charge value to 80%. This just means it gives you a threshold of 80% battery charge before it cuts out the charging. You can also increase the lighting on your keyboard or monitor from here directly as well. Right of that, we have a do not disturb with notifications and our settings. And right of that, we have our current access to main settings, as well as logging in, logging out, shutting down, suspending, and restarting the computer. Very good, we already checked this out, but one other thing I wanna check out is their Cosmic Launcher. Now, this thing is quite amazing, if I do say so. Not only does it look great, in my opinion, but it is blazing fast. As you're searching, the indexing here has already taken place, and it does make very good suggestions for what you want to launch next. So let's say I wanted to launch something like the calendar, I can directly from here and boom, the calendar is launched. It also shows you what you currently have launched up front. So if you wanted to reach something directly from here, this is another way of doing it. Instead of having to go searching through or using control tab or what have you to access things. Of course, if you want to switch workspaces, you can by simply clicking the up on the top left hand corner. Very easy to switch through things. Everything is very fluid at the moment, even though it's in development and not in production yet. We still have a ways before production comes through. And now let's go back and talk about some of the new updates to the Rust Cosmic Desktop that I can't quite test here 
but hopefully you enjoyed that walkthrough of the current progression. If you did, make sure to smash that like button so other people can see the progression of System 76's Rust Cosmic Desktop. Let's first talk about the System 76 scheduler, the 2.0 edition for us. It does bring nice changes, including this new updated scheduler, which is just a software that helps the CPU manage its resources and basically has been optimized to use fewer resources and reduce memory allocation. So basically 75% less resources by eliminating most memory allocation, avoiding UTF-8 string checks when not necessary. If you are currently using Pop! OS, it might be worth going to Pop! OS 22.04, but this is not what we came here to talk about. Let's actually talk about the desktop progression. Here is a new screen, as you can tell, quite different from what I showed you a moment ago. They have added quite a bit, but haven't quite released it to us to test. So things are looking fantastic here. The applets, if you haven't noticed, look even better over here. And it shows you the various different things that are available as far as applets go. Again, very similar thing to what I showed you on how the settings look like and how you can get around by either displaying the various different subcategories on the left-hand side, doing a search, or going backwards between the various different settings. You can also add applets as necessary, meaning notice up here, you're adding and subtracting things. That's how they work, which is an absolutely fantastic feature that they're adding to the top right-hand corner. You get to add and keep track of whatever you personally like in the top applet bar, or as I like to call it, progress bar. Anyways, continuing on, Cosmic Panels, desktop features similar to the top bar dock in Pop! OS, except with much more versatility. The panels contain applets or small embedded applications. You can think of applets as GNOME extensions to customize your experience, except there are separate individual applications running on your own process. And Cosmic Applets replace the GNOME extensions. I think I'm looking forward to that, which this will give us a lot more robustness without having to install extra extensions in GNOME. Cosmic currently includes essential default applets for things like notifications, workspaces, applications, battery, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and media controls. In the future, the applets can be added for a clipboard notes, whether custom menus or whatever you might imagine. They'll probably open up this up to developers so that we can get even more applets, which is even more exciting. Moving on, we do have a few screenshots here where they show us how they're moving the applets bar around. This is on the left-hand side over here with the dock here at the bottom. The next one, which is kind of new, I haven't seen this quite yet. They've actually combined the applets with the dock down here. And this is one seemingly connected thing, although it actually represents two different portions of the desktop environment. I actually kind of like the look of this. I don't think I've ever seen that across another Linux distribution, at least not pairing the two directly together. One of my favorites here is a very minimal setup where you only have the applets up on the top and not extending out to the sides so it doesn't take up the full screen a very minimal look if that's what you like get excited for the new design again another showcase of the applets and the cosmic desktop with the dock at the bottom now one thing i will mention is i believe this is all going to be configurable meaning you'll have a config file where you can actually edit the amount of space you want things to take up and edit the theme directly which is really cool i really hope that that does happen and that's why I think they have so many variations here that they've given us and shown us is because I think you can make those on the fly and make them however you want to meet your requirements. So Cosmic Settings is another update. The widgets library is beginning to fill out. We're starting to put them into use building Cosmic Settings pages in addition to the aforementioned panel and dock settings with keyboard input and wallpaper settings developed this month. So we got new keyboard input and wallpaper settings added to the settings app, which is great because they're making more and more progress here. Like Cosmic Panels, Cosmic Settings is modular with an API to add and remove settings pages. Projects that might want custom pages can easily add and remove them from the default Cosmic Pages. So what that means is for us developers, we can actually access this API that they've provided and put our own apps settings directly inside of this settings panel, which is cool because then we don't disturb the overall theme, look, and feel of the desktop environment. Instead, we can now implement our own setup directly into what already exists. Definitely looking forward to that. A few other things include the HDR HackFast and the 10-bit color support. In these, System76 participated in the HDR HackFast, organized by Red Hat to discuss a plan for adding in HDR support into Linux 
but it's going to take a while to get that support in. Just a summary there. And then as far as 10-bit color, this was added to the Cosmic Compositor. That way we get better color reproduction and it provides a prerequisite for HDR. Finally, getting towards the end, we are helping screen readers and accessibility. We're helping to build the Iced Rust GUI library for those of you that are unaware. System76 is contributing back into the library that they're using for their GUI framework. This library is used in order to create Cosmic apps inside of Cosmic Compositor for the shell functionality. Part of our engineering for ICE is to add the toolkits first accessibility infrastructure in order to ensure that Cosmic is accessible to all. Overall, we've seen a bunch of updates, including a new release of 22.04 for Pop! OS. These have all focused towards more theming support, a better desktop, which includes customization options and plans for future HDR support. Let me know what you think about the current development in Cosmic Desktop, the Rust version, whether you're excited or not, in the comments section below. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thank you for watching.